good morning all of you uh, so my talk is on uh, probability and its applications so first question to you so how many people uh, can tell applications about probability uh, how many of you know some applications of probability yeah okay okay fine any other application okay yeah okay good okay yeah reliability theory okay is someone else saying st stock market okay data compression okay what is it all right very good so you people have told me a lot of applications of probability but uh, do you know how it is really applied okay someone can tell okay so how is it really applied why is it useful Okay, no, no, not an application, a real life application. How knowing probability of an event can help you in reality, in a, in a real world problem. So we know that there are a lot of application. Other applications are machine learning. Okay, and uh, yeah, game theory, reinforcement learning. These are all fields. We know th this is getting applied. But I'm not going into any of these fields that other people will talk about. Okay, today I'm going to give you. Uh, how probability is used in decision making first okay so when there is an uncertain situation how do you take decisions okay so let us take a first a simple example let's say you start from a point a and you have to reach point b okay so you have to come to iisc you are staying outside here yeah? oh your board is on the table too sorry should i switch on the light or something it's okay you can see so let's say someone is staying outside IISC and they have to reach inside, uh, uh, reach to computer science department. So this is a source, this is a destination. So there may be multiple routes, okay? Route one, route two. So how do you decide which route to follow? What is the first thing will you will think about? Okay, so the distance, right? Correct. Okay, so then uh, then what else you will think about? Okay, that will come to it a little later. Second thing, the bus frequency or something, right? Okay, so once you are given these two things, you will try to see which is the best option for you. You will try to take out of the two alternatives, let's say. Now, things will get, so this is a decision making problem which is a little hard, but it, to make it worse, let's say the traffic is also there. So one has to consider traffic also into uh, your account when you make the decisions, right? So there is an uncertainty involved, correct? So that makes the decision problem little harder than the usual case, okay? So that is the first thing you have to keep in mind. So next thing is, so let us say we need to uh, make a product to its compliance, okay? So there may be factor one, factor two. So reliability of a product can be written as a function of factor one, faction, factor two, factor three, etc. right? Now you want to make this reliability 99%. You want to make a product with, uh, let's say, diameter three millimeter. Okay, so the factor of one will affect in a certain fashion factor two. So you will have to control these things so that you will make it uh, highly reliable. That is 99%. So based on that number, uh, what you can tell is the company is going to make profit, right? So that is going to be another thing. Okay. So the third thing you can uh, think about is a situation in in terms of inventory control. Okay. So what is so? Let's say you are the manager, and you have to procure goods. So how much, how many goods you have to procure for a day? You have to first decide. So what will you see? If you procure more than necessary, then you will have to. What you will have to do is you will have to pay the storage cost, right? And uh, if you procure less goods, you will not be able to satisfy the customers. So you have to analyze the situation, uncertainty involved, randomness, and then make appropriate decisions. Okay. So these are the three decision making instances I have given you where there is uncertainty involved and we need a systematic way of studying it. Okay, we cannot do whatever way we want. Okay, so that is what the probability is going to do. It's a systematic way of studying systems where there is uncertainty involved, right? Okay, and guide you in decision making, right? So that is what we are going to see first. Okay, now we'll take a simple example and try to understand that. So next I'm going to show, we, we would have studied calculus and we would have done integration Right, everybody knows integration here, okay. 
So how can we perform integration using probability when you cannot use the standard methods which you have learned, some substitution you must have learned, etc., etc., right? So we can still do integration using probability when the normal uh, integration methods will not work, okay? And uh, it is also useful in machine learning situations where one may have to perform higher dimensional integral. So there also it is getting used, okay? So we'll come to that later. Uh, last, I'm going to talk about how a deterministic pattern can emerge from randomness, okay? Fine. So let us start with the first uh, decision making example. How many of you have heard about Monty Hall problem? Okay. Okay, good. So, yeah. All right. How many people, okay, of you who knows the, uh, that uh, the answer is fine now? They are, you are convinced about it? Whoever has lifted the hands? You are convinced? Okay. Anybody else is convinced? Okay, fine. So, many people do not know the Monty Hall problem. So, let me anyway state the problem. Okay. And then we will see uh, what is the issue here. Okay. So let's say you are in a game show, okay. There are three doors, one, two, and three. Now, behind one of these doors is a car. The other two doors contain goats, okay. So as a host, I am the host for you. So I am going to tell you to pick one of the doors, okay. I am going to equally likely select one of the doors and put the car behind that, okay. So which door you would like to choose now? Uh, one, okay. Anybody else wants to choose anything else? Will it work better? There is no particular choice about it, right? So you'll have to choose randomly. Let's say your lucky number is one and you chose uh, one, okay? Fine. Now, I'm going to offer you a choice, okay? Now, as a host, I know wh where is car and where is the go where are the goats, right? Now, I'm going to show you one door which has a goat. Can I do that? There are two goats. Even if you have chosen a goat, then I can show you a goat. If you have chosen, let's say, the first which has a treasure or a car, then I can do it with equal probability, right? So that is there, right, good. Now, okay, now what I'm going to do is, after doing that, I'm going to ask you, do you would like, you would like to switch your decision or not? Okay, so some people say yes, some people say no. Okay, so what will, or will it uh, matter at all? So person who doesn't know, uh, who has not seen this problem, they can answer actually, it will be more interesting. Yeah, first time whoever is seeing this problem, they can try to answer. Yeah. Is, will it make any difference if you switch or not? Just because I have shown you a door containing goat, which is anyway going to happen. It doesn't seem like it, right? Right? Anybody? So, do you think there are two, one door uh, containing a car, one door containing a goat, should be equal probability, right? Is that what everybody thinks? Okay. But that is not true. The switching will be advantageous. Okay. You will have to study the model correctly. That is the reason why many people see this problem was po uh, was shown in a TV show. Actually, that show is called uh, "Let Us Make a Deal." It is an American TV show, and uh, the Monty Hall. The name of the problem comes from there. Monty Hall is the name of the host who uh, who shows this problem to the people and asks them to do this. And many people were uh, okay with both the choices, and they don't know why the switching is advantageous and. Uh, when this problem was even posted, people were very confused, even PhDs and they were, it because it is little counterintuitive, okay. So we'll see why it works, okay. So actually, the, if you switch, you have two-thirds two -thirds probability of winning. If you do not switch, you have only one-third probability of winning, okay. So we'll see how. Let us try to understand, you have 100, 100 uh, doors, okay, as before, and you have chosen door number one. So uh, the rules are as, same as before, that there are 99 goats. I am going to open 98 of the doors. And one of the door may contain a goat or may not contain the goat, right? Okay, fine. Now, what is the probability that I will pick a car in the first place or a treasure in the first place? Is it low or high? Huh? 1 by 100, right? Is it low or high? Very low, right? So, it's very unlikely you would have got a treasure in the first place. But, after, so, and now you are going to stick to your decision if you don't switch, right? Now, what about the door which is not open then? What will be the probability of getting a car in this? Yeah? Sorry? Can you be louder? Okay, so that is no, that is not the thing. See, initially, how did you choose your door number one? That is one in hundred. So, if you stick to the same door, what is the probability of you winning if you don't switch? 1 by 100, right? It doesn't change actually. 
So then if you switch, what is the probability? It is 99 by 100. So it is, seems very low. See, you do not know, the, but the host knows where the car is. Okay, That is the main crux of this problem. Okay, So you have chosen a door, thinking you will get a by lucky draw, but it is very unlikely. But just because he has opened all the doors, okay, then the probability of you getting goat in the first place will take you to the winning probability. So, right? So that is what is happening. It is getting swapped. Okay. So most of you might not even understand why it works during this talk. You can go back and try to read. Now, this is a just an intuition. Okay. First, that it is very unlikely you to for you to get the goat in the first place. Uh, very likely to get the goat in the first place. So that will be the winning probability if you switch. Okay. So let us see how we can do it little analytically properly. Okay. So, so those who are already seen also, they might not have seen it uh, in terms of the experiment outcomes, etc. So we'll see that. So let us see what are the possible possible outcomes of this experiment. Okay. What are the various possibilities? Okay. So let me denote goat two goats G1 and G2. We'll name them. Okay. Fine. And pressure as T. Okay. Right. Okay. So first component will denote what you have chosen in the first place when all the doors were closed. Okay. So initially every door is closed. You could have chosen G1, G2 or T. These are the three possibilities. The first component can take the values, these three values, right? Okay. What about the second component? So the second component is what the host will show you. Can he show you a treasure? Will it ever happen? No. Right? He can show go G2 or G1, right? Okay, fine. Let us try to find out what is the probability of G1, G2. That is this outcome happening. So, what is the probability that you pick the goat in the first place? G1 in the first place. 1 by 3, right? Okay. What is the probability that then G2 happens then? Right? 1, right? Once G1 is, you pick G1, the host has to show you G2. So, this is nothing but 1 by 3. Okay. What about G2, G1? Okay, very good. What about uh, treasure G1? Right, 1 by 6, right? Fine. So, everybody follows this. So, T G2 is also 1 by 6. Right? These are the probabilities. 33 percent chance to get the treasure first and 50 percent after. He can he can do randomly. He can take a decision. Right? So, this is the thing. All right. So, that is what we have computed. Very simple. Okay? Now, outcomes favorable to you when you switch is what? G1, G2 and G2, G1. Everybody is clear with this? So if you if the if you have picked G1 and the host has shown you G2 and you switch you will win. Same thing will happen if G2 is picked by you and G1 has been shown by host and you will still win. Any other outcome will favor you? TG1 will it favor you? No, right? TG2 will not favor you if you switch. So this is it. What is the probability of that W happens? Right? Okay, good. So we have computed it uh, uh, by defining the outcomes, etc. Okay. Now same thing. If you do not switch, it is a complementary event, by the way. So that is TG1 and TG2 are the favorable outcomes if you don't want to switch. Okay, fine. Okay. So, all right, right. So everybody understands why it works. May not understand completely. You will roughly understand. Just you have to keep in mind that it works. Okay, fine. Now, this is just a simulation. Okay, there is there are thousand trials here. Okay, and uh, number of people who didn't want to switch. And you see how many people have switched and how many people have won by switching and how many people have won by staying that is not swapping the decision. So this 0.6 that is the 2 by 3 almost close two thirds of the time whoever has switched has won the game. One third of the people who <coughs> one third of the people lost because they didn't switch. Just numerically simulation wise I have illustrated okay. You can do the experiment and see it is very very simple okay. All right. So the summary is what? If you switch, you win two third, uh, two, th two third chance of winning. If you do not switch, you have one third. So, what is the lesson learned now by this problem? <coughs> yeah. Why did I even uh, talk to you about this problem? Correct. So we have we have a decision making problem, very very simple looking problem, but everybody thinks it is half. But if you have gone like that, you would not have taken optimal decision, right? The optimal decision is to switch. So that's what we we have seen. Okay, we have machine learning. It is getting used. Reinforcement learning. All those places are used. But we'll see concrete application. That's what I wanted to show you people. That it is really helpful. That uh, knowing these numbers, with that you can take appropriate decisions with a simple illustration. Right? Everybody follows this. 
okay fine we'll take another simple example for addition making okay let's say you have two choices choice 1 and choice 2 right okay i'm going to give you rup 1 rupee okay or i'm going to give you in charge to 100 rupees with probability 0.9 rest i'm going to you have to pay me otherwise 10 rupees so what would which choice would you like to take anybody here yeah i'm not going to give you anywhere so but i'm just giving you only the choice huh how do you even do this problem by the way how do you do it it's an uncertain situation right so how do we systematically do it first anybody how do you do this see we will if it was a decision making situation we will see what are the positive what are the negatives we know something to do right same thing we have to do in this case also right <coughs> yeah anybody it's a very straight forward problem by the way you are going to get 1 rupee for sure you want to take that or you are going to uh, get 100 rupees with a very high probability and with a very low probability you are going to pay me 10 is this game playable but you want to take a chance to play this game or not yes okay fine what choice would you take huh choice 2 okay fine if i change the numbers you will still be using choice 2 few numbers how did you do how did you go at choice 2 by the way huh okay good okay that is the thing that's all okay good fine he has told some 0.9 into 100 minus 0.1 into 10 that is what we are going to do is that sufficient okay i'm going to tell you one more thing so this is a point of uh, let's say average depth uh, depth uh, 5 feet okay. Uh, okay let's say 3 feet all right so would you like to jump into that pond or not is a question i'm going to ask you average average is 3 feet that's what you have told by the way right no, i'm not telling anything good that's the starting point you are right so i'm saying the average depth of the pond is 3 feet so you want to jump into the pond and dive and whatever are you going to not do that and i'm going to tell the variance is let's say 100 feet later variation okay i won't tell you till you tell a decision first okay it is going to be really hard right see you should calculate both mean and variance okay so this is not the only thing but for this problem we'll first do that what is the mean here one average you are not going to change at every time you are going to get one rupee right is there going to be any variation zero right fine good so he said mean okay we'll try to take the other factor also into account okay so let's say this second choice what is the mean as he said it is 89 which is very high your mean is 1 but look at the variance 733 and its standard deviation is 27 which means 89 plus or minus this is most likely you are going to get still it is okay actually second choice is fine okay it's a simple decision to make so what is that we have learned so we'll see what these quantities expectation and variance this is called expectation it is a nothing but a mean of a random variable we'll define all these quantities after two three slides okay now what is that you have learned now you have learned we have to take a decision where mean is very very high right and the variance has to be extremely uh, as low as possible it is good but in our game we have a trade-off mean is not very very there's a trade-off between mean and variance right still it is okay second choice is better in this particular situation good so what is this uh, game it's a toy situation okay right in real situation what will you have after you go for job you will have to invest money right you want to put it in the bank or you want to put it in the stocks so putting in a bank is same as saying very less variance etc etc this will give you high risk how do you analyze such problems so so these cases has to be analyzed little bit uh, little bit more carefully okay i'm not going to say how it is done it is done you can you have to learn first probability and various other things systematically you have to learn and then you can do all those things that is how you do it you do not take your decisions randomly it won't be optimal right so there is a learning from this example right okay so we have seen two decision making situations where probability has really aided you right everybody is clear at least there is some benefit of using probability in high school we used to find the probability of uh, getting uh, uh, what is the probability of getting even number odd number etc etc and uh, also head tail tosses etc but we do not know how these things can be really used so someone said it is betting it can be used which is also true so this is what we have seen now okay right so let's go to the now i am going to give you a small mini tour of a probability course okay so it is not going to be hard you can follow with me uh, you do you don't have to understand everything 
we just can keep some picture in the mind it will be easier okay so this is a complete course six months course i'm i'm going to roughly tell you what are the salient things involved here okay fine so how many of you have heard what a random variable is okay good so many people very good okay so what is a random variable yes good that is correct okay anybody else so it's a formal definition i'm not going to go through that definition today at least it will be hard for me to tell everything then yeah anybody uh, a rough a rough idea is any random variable it has to take values in a particular domain right okay so i love to t it's a real number domain okay it will take minus 3 minus 4 it, let's say you have a card and i pick four cards from there and i'll ask you to sum them up okay you can for the like a jack you can keep 11 and the queen 12 etc etc and i'm asking you what is the sum probability that the sum is 4 is it more likely or less likely very less likely right so the random variable the sum what are the possible values it can take that is a range so that is called the domain of the random variable right okay next what is it it has a probability distribution associated with it what does that mean okay it has some mass we will see what it means okay so each number whatever number it is taking there is a probability of that happening correct okay so there are two types discrete and continuous we will see what it means okay so so when i tell you a random variable you will have to ask yourself what is the range of values it is going to take and for each value it is going to take what is the mass of that right okay so let's take a simple example that is the outcome of a die roll right so it can what is the range here 1 to 6 okay what is the probability for each thing 1 by 6 right all right good now these are the numbers this is called probability mass function right why is that called a mass function everybody is clear at least now see for each atom let's say one is an atom two is an atom uh, three is an atom etc what is the mass that is how much weight i should give it's like a discrete mass right so this is how it is okay so first property is what it should be positive it cannot be negative probability of happening of any particular point in the sample space or whatever values it can take it is going to be positive and all possible things if you sum up the total mass should be one so that is the first rule right okay good now this can be represented like this this is fine right everybody is clear taking value 1 is 1 by 6 i am putting it in the tabular form okay all right now i am giving you another example just that is not necessarily 1 2 3 4 just taking negative values so what is the which value is taking very highest value here zero, zero. okay good so then minus 0.2 etc right this is another artificially constructed example okay fine now similarly you have this tabular representation okay all right now we have seen this quantities earlier there is a mean and there is a variance okay so let's try to what is the mean mean actually the two means here yeah so average right it's a weighted sum okay so in a class uh, you some people have got 30 people have got uh, let's say 80 marks and 40 people have got 70 marks etc so you take the frequency how many people have got and then you weigh them that is as simple as that it's a very very simple thing okay so the next variance is one more quantity which we were interested in that example right what is that quantity mean correct variation from the expectation value yeah right so that is an error see x is what is going to happen and expectation of x is what we are expecting basically so the whole square is the mean square error right average mean square error right okay that is what it is okay now we'll move on to the continuous example okay so let's say when you travel from a place a to b that uh, time taken is going to be a random variable it is not going to be let's say let's say bangalore to chennai i don't know how many of you have gone but uh, it will take let's say six hours on an average okay but uh, there is going to be a variation so the time taken will be let's say from Five, th five and a half hours to seven hours uh, some some point some duration may be more likely some duration may be less likely etc right so it's an example of a continuous random variable okay fine what is this first of all it's called a uniform density why this name density can anybody tell huh very good excellent so that is the thing so mass 
was taken for the discrete case and density. So let's say you have a rod of length 0 to 1. How do you specify the mass? You specify mass density, right? Mass per unit length. That is the same way you have to do for continuous. Okay. This is sufficient for this uh, uh, talk. Uh, uh, more to uh, understand in continuous case than the discrete case, but this is okay. This is understanding is sufficient. What is the prop? What are the properties it should satisfy? It should be positive. Everybody is fine with that. Nobody has any problem with that, right? And it sh integral should be one. That is okay. The total mass is nothing but the integral over the complete rod size, right? That will be one. Probability talks only with unit masses totally. Okay, fine. There can be mixed type of random variable. Some. It can take both continuous and discrete in some domain that we are not going to talk about today. Okay, fine. Now another very very important random variable you all of you must have seen: normal distribution. Uh, okay. Can you people tell an example where such kind of thing can be expected? Yes. Anybody? Yeah, you don't know any practical cases where such thing happen. This uh, yes. Okay, machine learning is a practical example, very straightforward. Height of a people who are of the same group, grown up group, let's say. Okay, not exactly mean zero, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that is not the thing. So you have a mean. I don't know the mean, but it should be around 5.6 or whatever. And there is a variance based on a country. It will differ, right? Okay. So height will differ, the height distribution. Also in error. So error will be very closely concentrated. So if you are making a product, it will be, uh, the error will be around zero only. That is what we like to see. We don't want the error to be very, it should not have a big variance. Okay, fine. So what is the, what is this property? This is a very simple thing. Integral a to b f of x dx, what does that mean? That is a probability that it will happen in between a and b. Okay, this can be similarly, what is the mass of a system from a to b point? That also can be computed the same way, right? So one can think in terms of mass. Okay, all right. Now, what is the expectation here? Everybody is clear with that? Just the discrete case is going to get translated to the continuous case. It's again the weighted average. If you see, this quantity is nothing but the center of mass, right? Of a system. And that if you think it as a mass density, dm, fx dx as dm, integral r dm is nothing but the mass, center of mass. Right? What is this quantity in terms of mass interpretation? Yes? Somebody? Have, uh, okay, you must have studied about moment of inertia. Okay, that is nothing but this, right? R square dm basically. Now, the R square, R is not computed, it is computed from the mean. It is called moments. Okay, so we will come to that a little later. So, let us compute for simple example. For a uniform random variable, what is the mean? What do you expect? Mean. What is the, where is the center of mass of the rod of length 0 to 1? Middle, half, done, right away. Okay, good. But you can do that using integration, right? Integral x dx. Everybody knows how to integrate. Okay. What about the variance? What is the variance? Moment of inertia of the rod through the center. What is it? 1 by 12 ml square, right? So it is 1 by 12. You can do the calculation. That is not a big deal. Okay. Okay. Let us see the next thing. Normal, whatever we have seen. Symmetric. What do you expect the mean to be? 0? It is not a big problem. What is the variance? Okay. We have 1. Fine. Do you know how to compute this? Anybody here? It is little hard integral to compute actually, by the way. Okay. So let us not go into that. That is not the point of the talk that you can do from calculus. So, let, so you can compute it to be 1, okay? So, changing into polar coordinates, etc. So, if whoever knows about it can think, you can try it actually. So, we have seen what, we have seen what a random variable is, right? Okay. Now, let us go to the next. See, why, why are we doing this? We, I am going to state a law, law of averages, which is known as law of large numbers. How many of people of you know about this law of large numbers? It's a very, very simple thing, by the way. Anybody here? Law of averages. Okay. So, using that law, we are going to find, you are going to perform the integration. That is what we have to go through all these things. Okay. So, be patient. Okay. So, first thing. So, we have a random variable. We have defined it. So, what a random variable is, if I ask, everybody knows what it is, right? 
right? You have a mental picture what it means. You have a distribution over various things. That is the thing you should have, right? Now, if I do a function of a random variable, let's say I will score in a placement exam X marks that has a particular distribution, right? Based on my preparation, etc. Now, the salary package, let us say Z, is a function of G, right? I want to find what is the distribution over my salary rather than my own uh, this one. That I will be more interested in, right? Correct? Rather than my distribution, how much I am going to score in the exam, it is more like it is more interesting to look at the salary, right? So that is a function of a random variable. So we have to find, let's say x square is one example. Many function, whatever you think of, you can do. Okay, reasonable function you can assume. So what does this function of random variable do? Initially you had a distribution. Now it will change it to some other distribution. That is what it will do basically. We'll see an example. So the mean and variance can be computed as before. G of x is the value it is going to take and the density will be f of x. So you do that integration, right? The variance is the same thing. I hope uh, there is no problem with this, right? Okay. So let's do a simple calculation how it is getting transformed. Okay. Let's say find a random variable x. X is like this, okay? So why that x square, uh, why is that picture coming up? Can anybody tell? So it is taking minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, etc., right? What will x square take? Will it take negative values anytime? No, right? So fine. So it takes 0, 1, and 4. I hope I have not done any mistake. Okay. So the value it is going to take minus 1 is going to get added in 1. Right? Whatever mass here is going to be transformed to mass over here. Right? Everybody is clear with that? So the minus 1 and 1 will get together. That mass, these two mass gets added up and makes it a little grow longer. Okay? And minus 2 and 2 gets added up and makes it look like this 4. Right? Everybody is clear with this? It's a very simple thing. There's nothing in this. So certain things are going to help favor you and it's going to get added up. As simple as that. Okay. All right. Let's take a continuous case. You took a uniform random variable initially. We'll take this function w. First thing, random variable. Okay. What is the values, uh, range of the values of w? One of you can tell. Yes. First, let's substitute and see, right? u equal to 0, let's say it takes, what is it? 0, okay. If it takes 1, infinity. So first thing, oh, sorry. So first thing is this 0 to infinity. I have not shown you complete plot, 0 to infinity, okay? Okay, fine. So that is what we know first. So first to find out the range of the random variable. That is the first thing we should have. What are the, what is the possible values? And uh, you can do the computation and you can show the density is exponential. Okay. So initially you have a uniform mass, you had a uniform mass. Now you had a mass, you have a mass which is concentrated near the zero and it is decaying. Okay. So we won't do this computation that you can do later. I'm just telling how a function of a random variable can change one mass, one mass distribution to another mass distribution. All right. Okay. So now we have seen one random variable. Life would have been very simple if we had only one random variable, but uh, there, there can there will be many random variables x, y, z, etc., etc. Okay. So there is an important concept you people should know, which is known as joint distribution. We'll see. So first thing is s is a sum of two random variables x and y. Product. All these are functions. These are all random variables. Once you know a random variable, what you need to do first find its distribution, right? All right, fine. Now I want you to find uh, what is the distribution of S, X plus Y. How do we do it? Do we know anything about the connection between X and Y? Okay, first thing first. So let us take the example. Let's denote X, okay, to be one of the departments in IISC. Okay, X denote departments. So let's number 1 to 10, okay? Y. And uh, if Y will be 1, if uh, if I encounter a boy, uh, else z uh, 0 or 2, if a girl. These are two random variables, right? Correct? Okay, so first, can you tell what is the distribution of Y? Roughly, just I'm not telling you. We do not know the statistic. What do you think Y will be? 50 percent is that okay to be we will assume that we'll see equally likely I'll see a boy and a girl let's say okay 
so one of the departments i will choose equally likely also i will assume okay now if i tell you a particular department will the distribution of y change can you give an a department name where that can happen very good okay i also thought about the same thing okay fine one department where it doesn't happen doesn't change okay good okay fine what about mess what do you think in a mess uh, in a place i am talking about departments okay you can include one place location you can include mess in that let's say mess what do you think equally likely 50% let's assume that so there is a joint occurrence right x and y will happen together first we have to observe them together okay and based on what you have observed x the distribution of y will change that is the first thing you have to understand when you have many random variable there is a joint distribution it is going to happen together okay so that is what we are going to see right now so distribution of snp can be computed using from the joint distribution okay that we are not going to do but first what is this joint distribution okay so what is this example telling everybody can understand what it is x can take value 1 2 3 i don't know why it is queued is it or i am seeing it like that okay so 1 2 3 and y can take 1 2 3 4 the height will tell you what is the mass right okay fine this is a joint distribution we have made a grid small generalization from one dimension you can have multi dimensional generalization that we are not going to go fine all right what is this conditional distribution of y given x equal to 1 how did i find that can anybody say just see this oh sorry okay 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 just uh, see this line that's what i plotted there nothing and but there is a small change you have to renormalize it right fine that i have done that's why even though the relative heights are maintained it is not the same height by the way you have to take the total sum because the total of that is only one a particular column if you take it won't be one so you have to renormalize right all right so same way x equal to 2 this right x equal to 3 all right then there is something known as marginal distribution which we will be interested in what is that how did i get the distribution of y can anybody say what is the probability y will take value one can anybody tell exactly very 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 simple good so you add these three things that will tell you why so that is how you find marginal we don't have to do any renormalization here right basically there is probability of x taking 1 and y 1 and x taking 2 and y 1 you are adding all such things right so that is a marginal distribution okay fine so now now this math will look very lot simpler if I had shown you this, uh, I think uh, people would have got confused. But now it is very straightforward, right? I'm not going to show how it works for two-dimensional, uh, sorry, continuous case. All right. Now, what is the conditional? Okay. Everybody is clear with this renormalization, and that's it. As simple as that. Now, for each value of y, we get different distributions. That also we have seen through that example. All right. Very good. Now, what is meant by independence of two random variables is the first thing one should know. So for whatever we have done to define this notion of independence everybody knows what it means now can you tell the distribution should not change the conditional distribution should not change and it should be same as the marginal distribution for all the values that is the first thing the example i told was that independent those two random variable x and y was it For we saw that y is equal to uh, sorry x is equal to a mechanical department it changes but y x is computer science it doesn't change right so is it independent then dependent is there but if it is same for all the values x takes that is the most important thing just because for one value the marginal distribution doesn't change it doesn't give you independence so we don't get any information basically right we don't get any new information uh, from that we can tell something more about another random variable y all right so that is a notion of independence the value taken by y does not affect distribution of x so general example uh, which will be given is tossing two coins etc outcome of first toss second toss there are more towards independence which i am not going to go through but uh, so one can take that example tossing two coins okay so similarly the value taken by x also will not disturb y okay distribution that will maintain okay all right now we'll take a very very simple coin toss example 
I have a sequence of coin tosses x1, x2, etc. xn equal to 1 if it is head and xn equal to 0 if it is tail. Everybody is clear? Okay, good. So, what does Sn represent? Yes? Sn is the mean of, okay, good. What does that quantity physically mean? It is a fraction of heads, basically, right? Sn denotes the fraction of heads. See, x y x n takes 1 when it is head. Okay, Sn will physically mean that how many of the tosses were head out of the n tosses, right? Okay. This is also a sequence of random variable. Why? We have seen already. So, summation, all such things are random variable. Yeah, where is that? We have seen all these, these things are random variable. So, in a similar way, it is a finite sum. Okay, so it is also a random variable. All right. Question to you where does this sequence Sn converge to? It is a fair coin, by the way. What is a fair coin? Okay, so what does this number has to tend to? Half. Okay, good. This is known as law of averages. One has to prove it. Sn converges to half with probability 1 are known as law of large numbers. Okay. So, let us take a small, uh, so let us define the hypothesis. What is that? We have a sequence of independent and identically distributed random variable. So, we know what the keyword independent mean here. Okay, the value taken by x2 uh, will not affect x3 or x1 or anything. The distribution will remain same, right? That is the meaning. What is identically distributed? I am not defined it, but uh, can you people guess it what it is? It is same for all the random variables. See, coin toss is getting head or tail is same for all the random variables, right? Okay, so the two keywords are clear. Now, Sn we define as the average, the summation. It is called sample average or uh, yeah, average, okay. So, that Sn will converge to expectation of x, that random variable, the mean of the random variable, population mean with probability 1. That is known as the law of large numbers, okay. Everybody is clear? So, we are going to use this result. It is a very important result, okay. All right. What is a slight generalization to that? You, instead of putting, uh, summing over uh, xi, you can do over a gxi, right? Just a function of that random variable. So, what do you expect Zn to converge to? Expectation of Gx. Fine? All right. Anybody has any confusion with this? So, as before, we have seen, this is a, frac uh, this is a fraction of heads in that uh, coin tosses example. This is the sample mean in the general setting. Sn converges to expectation, the average. In this little slightly general setting, it will converge to expectation of that random variable y, which is G of x. Correct? Okay. Fine, good. All right. Now, we are set up to compute. How do you compute integral x square? Okay. Yeah, you have a question. Which one? Which one? Okay. So, why does n tend to infinity? Okay. So, I will take hundred tosses. I will see how many times head has come. Let us. Uh, what do you think would have happened? How many heads would have happened if it's a fair coin? Exactly. Do, are you saying there is not going to be continuously five heads will never happen if, if it is a fair coin? Is that what it is? Probability is half, okay. And every time we do not know st still, okay. But there is a probability that uh, five tosses can come consecutively heads, right? Very less probability. But if you take in a long, let us say, thousand or more one crore trials, then the, then you can see the fraction of time head and tail has come will be almost same. See, when you take a very, very small sample, let us say 100, you will, you will not, 70 times head might have come, 30 times uh, tails might, might have come. There is a finite probability, right? Correct, correct. So, just because the first time head came, can I say anything about second time head coming up? No, but still it can be head. Correct. So, out of the 100 times, there is a probability of getting 50 heads, which is which is there, right? Okay. Now, what is the probability of getting 70 heads and 30 tails? It is also same. No? Why? Everything is equally likely, right? 50 heads and 50 tails if you have. Okay. What is the problem? That is nothing but half power 50. Is it same? No. Okay. Why is it not same? What is the reason for that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So what are all the events favorable to you? I am asking you. 75 heads and 25 tails. How do you? Okay. So the question is this. Okay. So you have 100 tosses. What is the probability of you getting 50 heads and 50 tails? There is a finite probability, right? Okay. Good. So what is the probability of getting 75 heads and 25 tails? Are the same first thing? First, what is your answer? Are the same? Equally likely is it? No. Good. Correct. That is correct. Yeah. So why is it not equal? I'm asking. Everything is equally likely, by the way. Half, 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 half. It is not equally likely you have said it, but why? See, the whatever is going to cause, see, this 75 heads can occur at any places. So you have to add all those things. So you must have heard about binomial distribution. This is nothing but the number of success in n trials. So you, you will not take only that particular outcome. The any ordering is okay for you, right? The 75 could have come. You will have to add all those quantities, right? Correct. So that is why the difference will come, correct? So there is a difference in the probability, you are right. But when you take large number of trials, is when you can really realize that the fraction of heads as well as fraction of tails will be same. Till then, even though 100 times you have got heads from a fair coin, it is still, since it is independent, you, you are going to converge to half. That is a fact. That is the law of large numbers, right? Just because, yeah, you have a question? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, it will go to. Yes, yes. Correct, right. I don't want to go into the specifics, okay. We can discuss it maybe after this, okay. Uh, because that is a little calculation. See, this is not a very trivial theorem, by the way, okay. So we, you will have to take time, but as a fact, you can first take this, all right? Fine. So, okay, I'm going to ask you to do this. How many of you here can do this? Please raise your hands. Okay. Why some people are not raising, I don't know. Not everybody will be able to do this integration. Okay. Really? There are some hands not raised. Okay. How many people won't be able to do this integration? Please raise the hands. Easier for me to see. Okay. Everybody will be able to do. Okay. Fine. All right. Very trivial, right? 1 by 3. Now try computing roots and x. Now raise hands, whoever will compute now. Not, yeah. Anybody here? Actually, it, is, it has been a very difficult problem, by the way. And it is really difficult to compute it analytically. Fine. But what is this integral, by the way? It is the area under the curve for root sin x. I have just plotted root sin x from 0 to 1. Okay. And the shaded region will tell you the area. Now, can somebody tell how to do this? We can take strips and then add them. So, how much time you will take? To lot of time, is it? There are numerical techniques to do that. Okay, so you don't have to worry. But uh, it is okay. So now we'll see how this probability can be used to do that very very easily. That is nothing but law of large numbers. So what we do is this n uniform random variable you generate from 0 1 you know how to do that does any all of you here know how to generate a uniform random variable in a computer ok how do you do that very good ok fine all right so you use a rand function we won't go into specifics ok how that rand function works so you can do that n so it's a very simple thing to do ok good now I will compute root sign u1, root sign u2, root sign u3, etc, etc for n numbers. Just take this average. Nothing more. Very, very simple. Everybody can do this, I think. Okay. You can do it uh, yeah, in pen and pencil also. Fine. But we will use a computer. What do we know from laugh large numbers? Fine. Everybody gets this point. So, it will converge to expectation of root sin x. That is what we have seen that general result I have told you. Right. Okay. But what is the expectation of root sin x? It is integral 0 to 1 root sin x. Okay. So what we have done right now? 
just it, okay so this is a matlab code okay so uh, let me explain the code is very simple everybody can and x thousand random samples have generated square root sin x i have taken i have taken the mean over knows matlab can do it or use c or whatever rand function is in c also so what is the result 0.6426 quite good right you can do just sampling and then averaging you have found the integral of something which is very very hard okay this example is just a motivation in reality in machine learning you will have to compute higher dimensional integrals but you cannot do the integration whatever we have we, it's very very hard to do such integration this integration is known as monte carlo integration that is the title this technique of sampling and averaging all right is known as monte carlo average a uh, monte carlo integration you can read about it okay fine so all right now let us come to the last uh, uh, section okay fine let me so you start with a point x not y not okay and uh, you start going to the next point as shown in the slide okay so how do we do that so this is a blackboard so i'm going to plot one point x not y not okay now i will apply the function f to this point okay and then i'll move to the some some other point y so basically that's what i'm doing so how i'm going to do it is uh, like this okay the function f is going to be chosen not always the same thing i'm going to change the function f in a random fashion all right so and you plot those points very simple okay so how do we do that let's say so initially i start with 0 0 origin all right and then i apply the function f1 with probability 0.01 or i'll apply f2 with probability 0.85 yesterday we have seen linear uh, 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 algebra we have studied this is nothing but a linear transformation or a matrix you multiply etc it's a very simple thing to do right so you have a point x and y n and you give it to that and you get x n plus 1 y n plus 1 all right so you choose f3 with 0.07 okay are this okay so numbers adding to 1 up some okay fine yeah i have not done any mistake okay then all right so these things number should it have any form or something they should add to one etc etc is that any requirement this matrix there is no such thing i put some numbers okay now you plot that what do you get is this okay so does anybody know what this is fern okay it's a fractal good okay so what we have done is a very very simple thing you have started with some number 0 0 and you move to the next number using one of these functions very very simple you have done nothing complicated in this but what you see here is it a simple picture as it is going to be it's a very very complicated picture looks very very complicated but generated by a very very simple rule okay and reality you have this so that is named after the inventor bansley okay and this is in reality you have ferns like this so using euclidean geometry will you be able to explain why that has a particular structure in terms of lines circles etc etc why the leaf has this particular structure it is very very hard right correct but what one can do this is known as fractal geometry so look at this this is a self similar structure so if you go along that it is if you go along this it will look same you go anywhere any along any front okay it will be same okay everybody understands that so what is that this is a complex self similar and it's really beautiful right emerge from randomness just plot at the points in a particular way you can play with these numbers you can change these numbers and see what you get here all right that is uh, for you in your exercise okay so what are okay so what is the conclusion from that from this particular last section anybody sees any benefit of doing this any chance see you can understand nature better right first thing and moreover these fractals they have lot of applications initially they have come for only aesthetic purposes only okay but later right this uh, this has been used in a movie jurassic park you can read about it this fractal geometry has been used to make some rain drops etc 
in a movie it has also applications in medicine moreover it has a so uh, it has an application in an industry where a test which will it used to take three days is going to get over in only three uh, some very less time maybe three hours so it has a lot of applications you can study about it so we are not interested in fractal geometry what we are basically interested is in from randomness how some deterministic some order is emerging right so everybody is clear with that all right fine all right then we have come to the last uh, summarizing okay so what we have seen what is a random variable so what is a random variable please can you people tell me yeah it takes some values and it has a distribution as simple as that what are the types okay mixed also is there but we have not seen okay and some examples uniform random variable gaussian random variable etc i okay i have a video i'll show you at the end maybe any anyway, so so and also what is this functions of random variable what does it do it transform one mass to another mass right we have seen that and when there are more random variable we have a concept known as joint distribution all right and we have conditional distribution marginal distribution etc right all right now we have in this particular uh, talk i have tried to show you how it helps in decision making right and how it has been used to make in uh, perform integration so these two these are two application there are lot other applications of probability by the way machine learning in machine learning supervised learning reinforcement learning you will be seeing so okay so randomized algorithms everybody knows what it is pixart everybody must have studied so finding the pivot etc analyzing the complexity right it has been used so you can analyze such algorithms you will be seeing more about it another talk is going to be on randomized algorithms okay and also game theory and there is a subject known as stochastic optimization there also it is used so you study the stock market trend other things also in that okay all right thank you any questions i have a small video i'll just show you how that fern emerges i'll see if i can so this is what that uh, what happens actually this is what it generates right so you see how the pattern is getting formed we are just putting the points very randomly eventually it is going to a steady state and it is having some structure right same thing it is growing up and thicker and thicker okay so we'll also see the zooming part a little boring now anyway right okay so this is the zooming part you go through any front you will see the same thing that is a self similar structure i was telling you all right yeah thank you so any questions you can ask right now anybody so we can meet later also in the break thank you